Hi, Alicia Mitchell here with Evening Star Travel. I'm coming to you today to chat about the nine main regions and rivers in Europe for river cruising. So it's the first river we're gonna talk about is the Danube. I know lots of people have heard about the Danube or know about the Danube. And from the perspective of river cruising, it's often divided into two sections. It travels from Germany into uh, all the way to Romania and empties into the Black Sea. Uh, but yes, we divide it into the upper and the lower parts. The upper part is often what people do for their first river cruise. So it's usually and often from Nuremberg, which is actually on the main Danube Canal, getting into the Danube, down the Danube, and ending in Budapest. So it travels from Germany, Austria, Slovakia, Hungary, and ends in often in Budapest. Then your focus here is, you know, the history of the Habsburg dynasty. You get music, arts, culture from that region. And you do, you know, admittedly, you do get hints of what it was like under communist rule. Now, the lower Danube is quite a bit different just in its perspective. Uh, traveling from Budapest uh, into Romania, often you'll do a few days at Bucharest. Uh, you see so many countries there as well, wide expanses of rugged forest, cliff sides, uh, countrysides. You're into, uh, you know, Orthodox churches, and you do see a lot more of what it was like behind the Iron Curtain. So there is quite a bit more history there. It often isn't a first choice for a river cruise, but if you've done kind of the main rivers, this is a fantastic river. There are sites here that you can't see anywhere else. The next main river that we generally do river cruising on is the Rhine River. This is an absolutely gorgeous river traveling from Switzerland to the Netherlands emptying into the North Sea and this is a, another often it, this is also you either do the upper Danube or you do the Rhine for your first river cruise that's typically because there you get to see so much on the Rhine river cruise you're passing through four countries you're passing through Switzerland you often stop in France you uh, the majority of it is through Germany and then you end in the Netherlands at Amsterdam. So you get to see a wide variety from, you know, the canals and the flat farmlands of the Netherlands through the forested area of Germany and quaint towns into, you know, the cliff sides, the gorges and the mountains of Switzerland. So you're starting to see so much. This is a really great for seeing castles along the river. You don't necessarily get to visit a lot of castles, which disappoints some people, but you get to see these gorgeous castles up on the cliffside. Really, really beautiful. Uh, next is the Seine in France. So generally you'll start in Paris and then you'll go to the Atlantic. You'll end in the Normandy region of France. This is a lovely, lovely river cruise with, uh, you know, focuses on art and on the history of the region because there's so much history in this area from uh, the Middle Ages and, you know, the Viking, uh, Vikings given Normandy uh, through to the 1700s and into that Versailles period, uh, the Napoleonic period as well. You get to see a lot of that history. And then of course, World War II, where you can go and visit the beaches of Normandy. Beautiful, beautiful river, lovely area. Great to see, a great way uh, to see France, to see the different regions of France. Uh, next, we have the Rhône which also, of course, uh, a French river, but Southern France, the beautiful, beautiful river to explore. You see uh, vineyards, lavender fields. It's just spectacular and lots of history there as well. Lots of Roman history, uh, in fact, but the, the Provence region of France, and you see that Southern, uh, Southern coast area of France. Beautiful, beautiful. Also, uh, something we didn't really mention before, but there's a couple of tributaries of the Rhine that are often uh, forgotten about. 
the Moselle, which empties into the Rhine, uh, and it goes from Luxembourg uh, and into Germany as well. Really, really beautiful part, uh, forested areas and vineyards as well. Big wine country up there. Uh, and then the Main, which travels through these little quaint German towns. What happens is it goes into central Germany uh, and there's the main Danube Canal. So there's a canal that connects uh, the main and the Danube. And often, you know, for those grand European tours, you can go all the way from Romania uh, on the Danube, up the Danube, through the main Danube Canal, and then on the main and then to the Rhine, up into Amsterdam. So it really is connecting so much of Europe. Absolutely spectacular. The Moselle, yes, we talked about the Moselle into Luxembourg. No, we talked about it. Uh, now, we have talked about Amsterdam, but also a big region for river cruising is the canals of Amsterdam uh, and ne the Netherlands and Belgium. So often this is done as a tulip time cruise so that you can see Kukunov Gardens and uh, the greenhouses of the Netherlands, uh, but it's also beautiful to, to explore Belgium and the chocolate industry of Belgium and seeing, you know, their seafaring history. It, it does focus quite a bit on that through Rotterdam and of course Amsterdam as well. So that's a great river cruise and great area, maybe not as scenic, uh, but scenic in a different way uh, with the different canals. Uh, the Bordeaux region of France, so uh, southwest France, whereas um, the Rhone was more southeast, the Bordeaux region is southwest and focuses on that Bordeaux region. So wine, 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 then more wine, wine tasting, vineyards, culture, uh, so much. Again, maybe not as picturesque, a river cruise is some of the other rivers, but getting into those towns that you just, you wouldn't normally visit on a trip to France, it's a great region to visit. Really lovely. There's also uh, the Douro in Portugal. Uh, now, not every river cruise company does this river. Uh, it is a bit of a smaller river and they have to have special ships for this region. But starting in Porto, uh, Porto is a gorgeous city like just so picturesque. And you travel up the river. The towns that you visit aren't necessarily on the river. So you have to bus a little bit out to visit the towns, but it is also a great region, a great wine growing region. So you see vineyards and all sorts of things that way. Absolutely lovely. And often you'll take a trip into Spain. So you'll check off a couple of countries with that. There is also the Elbe in Germany. Now this isn't Again, not as not all the river cruise companies do this river, and it's not a river that I, I generally recommend. It's more suited to a canal cruise. Uh, it does tend to get low waters, but gorgeous little quaint German towns. Beautiful area to travel into. Last, uh, I'm, I'm going to mention there are some rivers in Russia that we used to have river cruises traveling on. Um, Needless to say, uh, nobody's offering those right now. Maybe in the future if things change, but uh, they're there. They're absolutely there. Now, river cruising opens up a world of possibilities of visiting towns that you wouldn't normally see and seeing a country from a completely different perspective and a different pace than you normally would travel at. Very laid back. Uh, you know, you can watch the world pass by. Absolutely gorgeous. I highly recommend it. So when you're ready to start planning your river cruise to Europe, don't hesitate to reach out to me, Alicia at Evening Star Travel. I'd love to help you find the perfect river for your river cruise. Again, Alicia Mitchell with Evening Star Travel. You have a great day.